Hello everybody, welcome back to Best Books Ever. I'm Tyler, and today I'm starting a new book, starting a new series. Uh, I'm starting, what is the name of the series? Just Percy Jackson series, I guess. Uh, but the first book is The Lightning Thief uh, by Rick Riordan. And we're doing the first half, chapters 1 through 11. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Very excited to start a new series. Um, this is our second series, first one being the Mistborn series. So go check that out. That was a lot of fun, but uh, first time doing a new series, so that's fun. Um, this was a book and a series that I haven't read in a long time. Um, probably over 10, definitely over 10 years. Um, but yeah, figured I'd give it a shot. And we're going to talk about it. Because it's actually much better than I remember. I was I was actually kind of afraid going into this book, being like, ah, is it, you know, was it good for the time? Was it good for my age? Um, but no, I was very invested in this. So, as always, let's start with the end. Because that's what we do. We have the very end of this section with Percy... Uh, Annabeth and Gover, they're fighting Medusa. That was a really cool scene, really cool chapter, with them kind of slowly realizing that, you know, kind of weird, you know, in their haze, you know, coming off of uh, the Furies and all that, I'll talk about in a second, um, them losing all their stuff. Like, they didn't have a lot of stuff going into it, but it is cool, like, having a, a quest, right? A fantasy book, or even doesn't have to be fantasy, but just like, you know, a, a, a story where the protagonist or protagonist, they, they set off. And it's like, okay, cool, this is what the story is going to be normally in in a story like that when uh, the the hero and, and his crew go out on a quest, on an adventure. It's like, okay, this, this, this is going to be the long haul. And uh, again, they didn't start off with a whole lot of belongings, but for them to pretty much immediately lose everything, aside from whatever's on their person... Uh, very unexpected but you know but also very cool because now it's like they they have to do with whatever they have and their wit they're already on a very very short uh time schedule with only 10 days so but again that all leading to them getting to medusa's place and just kind of being um you know they're like they're like senses being numb a little bit just from them smelling food and them them just wanting a place to stay again it's, it's it's been raining for a long time you know um very annoying very you know very irritable so them to get to this place and they're just being the little clues here and there like how you know m knew all their names without them saying anything that was very weird um all the statues being like weird like uncanny valley type um but then for them to actually do it and them fight and them realize it's Medusa. And um, I mean, it also makes sense too. You know, I like the order of events in which each one found out who it was. Like Grover immediately suspected something. I think it has to do with his just natural like um, protector type role, right? Like he's, him and other satyrs are used to, um, you know, sniffing out other half-bloods and, other monsters to save the half bloods that they're supposed to be protecting. So it makes sense for him to immediately be like, okay, something's off here. And then Annabeth, a little slower, but still kind of piecing things together. Again, she seems more so to have the like logical side of, of everyone. Um, again, Grover's more like cautious, but Annabeth, I think, is more, more like analytical. Um, I think it has to do with the whole like daughter of Athena thing where she like she thinks stuff out she has a plan she puts pieces together and then Percy just being an idiot <laughs> just being like yeah but but food <laughs> um yeah I, th I, th I thought that was really cool again just like another instance that we can drop our trio into and display each of their strengths and weaknesses because again like even when I mean, we've seen Percy and Grover together a bit we haven't seen annabeth with them we haven't seen them all as a group um you know so to kind of mold that and see okay what is everyone's role what is everyone going to be good at all that stuff is is, is good um and then yeah for them to do it percy takes off the head 
a Medusa. Very, very cool. But then I like the end where he decides to be a little, little bit spiteful and send the head to the gods at Mount Olympus. You know, obviously Grover being who he is again, I was kind of learning the personalities. Wasn't a big fan of that. Annabeth also wasn't a fan, but it, but you know, she doesn't say anything. She just kind of, you know, just kind of like turns, you know, you know, turns from it. Um, I do really like that though, because even though Medusa was bad and was trying to kill them slash capture them slash turn them into statues. Her, he, her giving the warning of not being the god's pawn, um, I think really hit Percy because everything is starting to make sense to him. Or, you know, or at the very least, he is starting to think about things. And everything that's happened so far in just the last couple weeks, especially, but even his whole life, where it's like him having to move around, um, the relationship that he's been forced to have with his mom, not having with his dad, begrudgingly having with Gabe. <laughs> you know, it's like there's lots of things that happen in his whole life. And then you have, again, the last couple of weeks with his mom uh, dying, presumably. Um, you know, him being thrown into this camp. He doesn't know anyone. We know it's Grover. But, like, just, like, his, his whole life is different now. Um, all this stuff, right? Like, he doesn't feel like this is right, you know, and then for Poseidon to claim him now, it's like, oh, well, he's only doing that because it benefits him, you know, it's, it's, you know, even, even Chiron said, it's like, it's, it's a gamble, it might not really work, but this is kind of Poseidon's Hail Mary, um, it's just like, he's just thinking about it, unless he's like, he does feel like a pawn, like, even his own dad, Poseidon, is using him, um, so for him to take that and say, you know what, I'm going to send a message, sends him the head. Maybe someone will trip up and get turned to stone or something. Um, but, but at the very least, it will send a message to be like, hey, I'm not just going to do your bidding um, on either side, whether it is getting the lightning bolt just to, uh, you know, just to help my dad's side win or to die, you know, at the hands of the other side who, who wants me dead. Like, I'm not just going to be a a part of this game, of this war that you guys seem to be brewing. Um, I have my own reasons for doing it. So I do really like that him being like a little spiteful, a little rebellious. Um, and again, that is a nice kind of turn to the setup where it isn't just A to B plot line. It is like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to go outside of that a little bit. Um, that's a reason that I, that I very much like Percy, so we'll see how that turns out. I'm sure we'll see the, the aftermath of that, them, like, getting to Mount Olympus. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, unless they die, but I doubt that would happen, seeming there's four more books, unless we change protagonists, which I have read series that have done that. I've read series that have had a different protagonist every book, so maybe this is one of those. Um, What else do we have? So we talked about that. Oh, yeah, and then the Ms. Dodds and the Furies. Uh, again, another really cool scene. I was kind of seeing their dynamic. Um, I love how Grover and Annabeth immediately are like, hey, put the hat on, get out of here. Them having that, like, that survival instinct. Um, and then even Annabeth talking about it afterwards to be like, hey, like, it's cool that you came back to help us, but you need to survive because if you die well one it sucks because you'd be dead <laughs> you probably wouldn't be a big fan of that but two it's like you are the only chance and i think on the surface level it can come off as a little selfish because you realize that she's saying well you're my only chance you know I've, I've, I've been waiting for one of the big three to come along and if you're gone well that's kind of it for me <laughs> you know but then also it's like well we don't want a war you know, out, you know, outside of my own needs, uh, you know, whatever. Again, we, we still don't know. You know, that is something I wanted to touch on of her prophecy and like what, what she's trying to do. Because we know a little bit of her backstory, um, you know, her her coming here, her not having a quest since, or her not leaving, I should say, uh, Half-Blood Hill or, or Camp Half-Blood. 
half blood hills on the top with the tree um her not leaving since she was seven i mean this this is her home like her not knowing her mom and her obviously not working out with her dad and now her just wanting to i don't know like do something and prove herself i guess again we she hasn't really said she's come close a couple times to like telling us what her deal is and like what she's trying to do with her life um hasn't really come out yet but yeah so then we roll all that back into oh and also if you're dead the war of the world <laughs> is gonna happen and uh that's not gonna be good um so yeah that was a cool fight and then the whole uh I was actually seeing an example of it, but Chiron did mention it earlier, the whole celestial bronze thing, how celestial bronze is specifically made for the, uh, you know, the like creatures and God and God spawn, all that stuff won't actually hurt mortals, uh, which, which is really cool. It's a really nice way to kind of get around that explanation, um, you know, like having to like face that, like, what do we do? So it'd be like, oh, you can just cut regular people and just phase right through them. Um, I, I do like the little explanation there too, where it's like, oh, mortals aren't important enough for this blade to cut and for any celestial bronze, you, you assume. So it's like, oh, that's that's neat. But then to immediately backtrack and say, oh, well, but but you're, you're a half-blood, so <laughs> uh, celestial bronze and regular will hurt you so sorry you know because for a second you're like oh well maybe you know i'm not a god maybe maybe the bronze won't hurt me it's like well no <laughs> you have like the blood in you so it won't, it won't work exactly how you wish it would um but that's cool uh, you know and it also adds to the effect of whenever they get hit with it they like they like puff they like immediately disintegrate which is a really cool image um they like puff into like gold sparkles or whatever um so that's really neat and then this scene also introduces, again, we hear about it, obviously, from, from Annabeth, I believe, but this actually, you know, actually gets executed on the whole idea of, you know, quote unquote, killing these monsters it doesn't actually kill them because they can't die. Um, you know, because again, you know, it's not like a a cow or something, you know, you, you, you kill a cow for the meat or whatever, cow's dead, not coming back creatures though they are technically immortal which means they can die but only temporarily they will come back um i would assume this this is especially true for some of the more important creatures you know because you figure you you figure the furies uh they are like of hades right and hades is king or whatever of or god i guess god of the underworld um probably pretty powerful so he's like hey get on out of here <laughs> go out there and get percy you know um so yeah you figure that's kind of how that works but that was neat and then uh what else do we have um i guess real quick i do want to touch on something that grover said about gabe uh the whole reason why he he was there, right? And the reason that, that, you know, that the mom stayed with him uh, was because his, like, aura or something, his his aura was so strong that it would mask even Percy. Not only him being a half-blood, but him being a half-blood of one of the big three where it's, it's even stronger. Um, it makes a lot of sense, you know, because I feel like the entire book, or at least up until... Uh, you know, he gets the half blood because once that happens, you're kind of, you know, the us as the reader, we're kind of focused on being here and gods and everything like that. But before that, when was, this was just kind of normal, well, seemingly normal, you are like, why does why does Sally stay with him? <laughs> he seems literally the worst. Why does he stay there? But um, or why does she stay there? But it's like, oh, now with this explanation, it makes sense. She was doing it for Percy the same way she was doing everything for Percy. Um, probably loved him a little too much right um so that was really good i'm glad they explained that because you know because otherwise it's like oh is it love like does she love him and the relationship turns sour and she can't you know you know because i feel like that would make her character weaker 
So for her, so for this explanation to be the case, I feel like it actually does the opposite. It makes your character stronger. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and then what else do we have? Um, I already touched on a little bit of Annabeth backstory. So let's touch on Grover real quick. Um, he's cool. I do like his quest his mission to become a seeker, right? Was that it? He wants to be a seeker or a searcher or something. Him having to successfully bring a half-blood to half-blood hill hasn't happened yet. We know of the one time he just, I think he mentioned or something where he was like, oh, I didn't really work out last time. So now this is a second chance. Um, now he has to do it going to quest. And so hopefully they win. I mean, hopefully they succeed just so he can be whatever he wants to be. Um, they haven't really explained what that is, though, like what exactly a a seeker is. Um, c- you know, because my first thought is, oh, he goes maybe and like seeks out other half-bloods, but that's kind of what he does now. So it, it can't be that. It's got to be bigger than that. Um, I'm not sure, you know, but it is nice because I feel like he is more like the stereotypical, like, comic relief character. Um, and so for him to be more than that and him not just be this, like, you know, again, like, like slapstick type character it is, oh no, he actually has like, I don't know, it, it sounds simple, but he, he does have like thoughts and feelings and like, um, some sort of drive in his life, which is nice. Um, you know, I don't want any of these characters to be weak, weakly written, I guess, where it's like, oh, this character's just kind of here for that. It's like, no, 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 all three of them seem to have all three of them have lives and they've gone through a lot before meeting each other. You know, none of these characters are made because of the group that they're in so far, it seems, you know, we'll see what happens further on. Um, but yeah, right now I think they're all really strong. Um, I guess we'll maybe talk about the quest last because there's a lot of meat there. Um, so we'll touch on a couple other smaller things. There was the Hellhound. Hellhound came to Half-Blood Hill. That's really scary because, not, not because it's there, which is bad, but also because it can't just be there, right? They, we had the explanation that Hellhound, or, or any, any evil creatures like that, can only be there for two, two ways, right? One, they were, uh, what's, what's the word they use, like? populated or something you know like mr d or chiron or something puts different creatures into the woods that way the 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 campers can train and all that right that, that's fine the other way is for someone in the camp to like give them access to like in, invite them in mr d and chiron or anyone did not do that so they're suspecting that someone in the camp is a spy is a double agent working for someone well hades most likely uh, but that's also scary, you know, I feel like we haven't really gotten into that, you know, it's been mentioned a couple times, but there has been a whole lot of, like, fear and, like, paranoia about it, not as much as I would like there to be, you know, I mean, I would like to think that none of the campers did it, but then if none of the campers did it, that would mean that there's some other person, like, hiding out in the woods somewhere or something, you know. I would much rather that happen though than be one of the campers because then it's like, well, how did, how did that happen? You know, it was like, you know, it was like a sleeper cell agent or did Hades or one of its minions like get to you and like turn you? Or like I said, maybe there is some other like creature or something, but then it's like, they would have had to have gotten in, right? So I feel like it has to be a camper or one of the counselors or something. I don't know if we've met all of them yet. Um, cause like the, the adults, um, you know, and there are older campers there, but in terms of like the adults, we all, I, all I remember is Mr. D Chiron. And then there's Argus, the, uh, was like chief of security or something. Maybe there's others as well. Maybe one, maybe you got to one of them or just one of the kids, but that, 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 that seems unlikely though, that one of the campers, uh, summon the hellhound and like why well i guess it'd be for hades but why still why (laughs) 
Like, what do they get out of it? Unless Hades just scared them. But I feel like if something like that were to happen, like, yeah. It is interesting because Percy, Percy's mom died. <laughs> um, Not funny, but, but Percy's mom is dead. And then obviously Percy's dad is a god. But that case is not the same for everyone, right? Because like other campers, I'm sure their parents are alive. Because like Percy's case is very, very, very specific, right? Because he is the child of one of the big three, which makes it makes him very powerful, makes his aura very strong, but is also very not good because of the pact, right? But then you have someone like Annabeth who, I mean, seemingly, you know, to, you know, the way she talks about him, I'm I'm guessing he's still alive, right? So I guess maybe Hades could be threatening, you know, could have gotten to one of the campers' mortal parents and been like, hey, do this or they die or something. Um, so I guess that's possible. We'll see though, right? Um, what else do we have? I already talked about it. Poseidon's Percy's dad, uh, which is which is really cool though. I already kind of talked about mostly everything in regards to that, but um, his powers are cool, right? Like he, when he's in water, he's more powerful. Heals up. You know, we saw him fighting Luke. As soon as he put the water on himself, he was more agile, more skilled with the sword. Um, and then when he stepped in the river, 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 yeah, ocean, ocean, right? Because they're on Long Island, so you're assuming that it's the ocean. <laughs> um, he like healed up and got, again, more powerful and whatever. Um, also, another thing with that, the sword... That was the pen sword that was a gift from his father, from Chiron as well. Um, the only sword that he mentioned uh, that actually felt good in his hand. Every other sword was off balance, too light, too heavy, all that stuff. Um, I wonder why that is, because that's not normally true, right? Like, there is like a regular balance that I'm sure everyone feels good with, but it's never like there's only one sword <laughs> in existence that I can use. Like, that's usually not the case. So I wonder if there'll be some sort of explanation for that or if it's not that important. Um, and then, yeah. Quest. Quest time. So the whole shtick, right? The whole basis for this story, it seems, is Hades... Not Hades, I don't know why I said his name. Um, Zeus, got his master bolt stolen, presumably from Poseidon. Not Poseidon directly, because he can't do that. Where uh, Zeus under the impression that he used Percy to steal the master bolt from him, right? The timing would all make sense. On paper, Percy did it. But we know, unless there's an unreliable narrator situation going on, uh, we know Percy didn't do it. So now we have to go look for, uh, I guess they think that Hades has it. Um, so that, that's, what, that's, that, that, that's what's going to happen. Um, very sad stuff, you know, very sad stuff because they have to go to the underworld. <laughs> I mean, listen, they've been doing pretty good so far, right? They fought off the Furies, fight off Medusa. Um, I don't know how it's going to go, though, when they have to... Uh, go to the actual underworld and fight Hades. <laughs> you know, it'd be the same thing as going in an airplane and being like, come at me, Zeus. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't think that's gonna... Home court advantage is an understatement. <laughs> um, I mean, even them getting there, like, if they're gonna run into monsters, like, constantly like this, they might not even make it. They only have so many days. I think they get there. I, I don't know. I haven't done the math, and I will not do the math. But how long does it take you to get from New York to California <laughs> by land, you know? It's got to be a while, right? Because America does not have long-form public transportation. Uh, I mean, like, buses, but, like, trains? If we had a train system, ooh, boy, we'd get there fast. Um, yeah, but we'll see. We'll see how that happens. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I just don't know what they're gonna do. I mean, let's say they get there in time. 
how do they... I mean, first off, Hades might not even have it. You know, like, <laughs> we're, we're forgetting all of this. We're just assuming all this information. We don't know any of it. Like, he might not have it. He might be like, yeah, I don't got it. Even if he was the mastermind behind all of this, uh, behind all of this, he might not physically have it. He might have, like, someone else out there, like, carrying it or something. Like, oh, I knew, you know, because he's smart, maybe, <laughs> right? I mean, he's a god, you know. You know, so maybe he's like, oh, I knew you would come here, so I didn't keep it on me. What do you think I am? An idiot? <laughs> so that could also be possible, right? Maybe Hades isn't even the one who took it. Maybe he's just uh, a very fortunate bystander in all of this. Maybe Poseidon really does have it, you know? That could be true. Maybe Zeus gaslit everybody <laughs> and actually never got it stolen and is just using this as an excuse to start a war. You know? Could also be the case. We don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with that. And then uh, I did want to mention a couple of the lines, right? So we have the Oracle, which seemingly very, very important, right? They're the ones who... Uh, told Annabeth her whole thing. Again, we still don't know what the deal with that was. I really hope that we hear some of it. Um, I don't remember if... I, I, I just... I just uh, honestly, I don't remember what it is, like what her deal is. Um, like, I don't remember like her like quest or whatever, you know, like what she's trying to do. Um, you know, because again, like her whole pretext is that she's waiting for someone very, very important. Again, assuming... It's one of the big three, or a, a, a child of one of the big three to help her achieve something. Again, we don't we don't know. So, But the Oracle is the one who kind of uh, prophesies that. you know. And then we have Chiron, who talked about him going to the Oracle and him seeing certain things, or him hearing certain things, figuring certain things out. Um, so now we have Percy going there, and the first couple lines, uh, pretty normal. Talking about the lightning bolt, getting it back, all that stuff. Uh, but then we have the second couple of lines, which he does not mention to Chiron. Um, I really think he needs to tell somebody, though. Because <laughs> carrying this sort of weight on your shoulders, it's going to be a distraction. So I, I really hope he tells Annabeth and or Grover at some point, the, the other half of his prophecy. Um, because there's a line where it says that he'll be betrayed by a friend. So we'll just stop right there for a second. Betrayed by a friend. Well doesn't really have a lot of friends I would say that the only I mean three friends maybe Chiron Annabeth and Grover and even Annabeth I wouldn't even call her a friend at this point you know um, I hope they get to that point where they can call each other friend and they're not always like uh, ribbing each other right but I guess some you know some ribbing is what friends do so Annabeth I'll I'll loosely consider a friend but definitely Grover um and even Chiron you know Chiron to me you know what's the definition of a friend right even Chiron I wouldn't say friend I would more say like mentor you know um but we can probably consider those three as like friend because like everyone I mean I'm sure like he talked to other people I mean especially when he was in cabin 11 right but like there hasn't been a lot of like you know, I mean, even like Luke, but even Luke, I wouldn't really call a friend. Like he's just someone who, you know, like he was, he's been nice to him, but I feel like that's just kind of who Luke is. I mean, especially him being one of, if not the like elder member of cabin 11, right? Like him, like taking the toiletries and be like, here, I got, I got these for you, you know? Um, and even him giving him like the wing shoes, it's like, is that enough to be a friend or is that just like, hey, I'm looking out for you, you know? Hey, I, I, I need you to win the same way everyone needs you to win because we don't want a war, <laughs> you know? Like, is that friend material? I don't know. I mean, I would definitely call Annabeth a friend more than Luke, even if slightly. But if we take all four of them into consideration, it's like, betray? Betray how? Like, is, is one of them? Um... I don't know. 
betray? Like, what would there even be to betray? You know, I mean, Luke and Chiron, I mean, I definitely feel like it's leaning towards Grover or Annabeth because how are Luke or Chiron going to betray him? They're not with him on the quest, <laughs> you know? Like, what, I, I mean, unless one of them are like following them and like, you know, whispering to Medusa, hey, in about 30 minutes, <laughs> Percy's going to be here, <laughs> you know? Like, unless something like that, like, so I feel like it's definitely leaning towards Grover or Annabeth. Um, but again, how are they going to betray, you know? Like, haha, I don't know. We'll see, though. It definitely makes sense why he wouldn't want to say that part, though, to them. Because, you know, I feel like he definitely can't go through something like that. Um, him being alone and being an outsider and then him finally finding maybe some friends. And then the Oracle's like, one of them will betray you. <laughs> It's like, no. Um, and then the other line. Um, he will fail to save what matters most. Or something like that. What matters most. Well, the only thing he's trying to save. Or, oh no, like, re retrieve? I forget the exact wording. I mean, I feel like that's definitely leading us to believe that he's going to fail the quest. He's not going to be able to save the Master Bolt from the underworld um which if that's true that's going to be a very if if that's true then i feel like that's going to lead to a very interesting story <laughs> where it's like oh they fail book one is them failing the quest and then book two is war <laughs> you know um because like what else is there to save like this is the quest the quest is to get the master bowl right um but all of this comes back to, I like Chiron's little, uh, little thing he says to Percy after all this, where he's like, hey, don't, you know, don't take all this at face value. A lot of the time, uh, you know, the Oracle's lines have double meanings. So whatever you might have heard, um, your first instinct, your first interpretation of it is not necessarily what's going to happen. Most likely it's not the, the outcome that you're expecting is going to be something different um so we'll see though uh we'll see how that plays out and uh yeah that's pretty much it that is the first half of the book um a lot of stuff a lot of really cool characters you know i think that's what i'm remembering i like so much about this series is that it is just like some cool characters cool things happening you have some nice little fun dialogue um, I'm always here for a friend group. So we got Grover, Annabeth, and Percy. Um, they, they already seem to be getting closer to each other. You know, again, I feel like Annabeth more so is sort of like the outsider in the group just because Percy and Grover have spent so much time together. Um, you know, but even that, you, 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 even past this, we have a conversation um, after the Fury thing where Percy and Annabeth kind of talk and it's like, oh, you know, this was pretty good, you know? Like, oh, you think so? I thought I'm pretty good too. So, um, you know, I definitely hope by the end of this, they're like a real tight-knit group just in time for them to fail saving the Master Bolt and starting a War of the Gods. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is it. Um, let me know what you thought of the first half of this. Uh, first 11 chapters of the book. I think it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good introduction. And um, yeah. Uh, let me know what your favorite parts were. Anything I missed that was important. And uh, yeah. Love it. Next time we're finishing the book. You know, chapters 10 or not 10. Why did I say 10? 12 through 22. Um. We'll see if their crew gets it. We'll see what other creatures they run into, because inevitably they will. Um, we'll see if they're able to save the Master Bolt. We'll see if Percy is able to somehow finagle his way into getting his mom back. Don't know if that's possible, <laughs> because the mom isn't immortal. Because like the, the way I interpret this is that gods and like creatures can come back because they're some level of immortal. But I'm assuming mortals can't come back. So I don't really know what Percy plans to do there. Um, but that is it. Um, yeah, have fun. And uh, let's finish the first book.